Yeah, Ed Anzac, I am an economic development specialist with the City of Burlington Community and Economic Development Office called CEDO. And I'm Clem Nyland, I'm general manager here at uh, City Market Onion River Co-op in lovely Burlington, Vermont. We knew that we needed to expand and it, right at that point in time, which was 12 years ago, the uh, downtown grocery store went kaput and uh, the city wanted to uh, have you know, a lively downtown and saw a grocery store as part of it and put out a request for proposal for folks interested in becoming the downtown grocer. So uh, City Market threw its name into the hat knowing that we're ready to expand. And uh, that was kind of the genesis of it. So the, the final bids were, were, as I said, the two bidders were selected, that went before uh, the city council for a vote. The city council voted unanimously, almost 12 to two, uh, in favor of going with local. Oh, wow. Well, we were really lucky that Shaw's overplayed their hand. Uh, Shaw's knew that they were the popular favorite. Um, and I think that the, what they did was they, um, they became a little arrogant and they demanded a couple things, such as a parking garage that people bucked at. It wasn't part of the original request for proposal. So we were able to get in. Um, I look at it through the back door. Uh, what our challenges were is that we were a natural food store. We had a, a food policy like a lot of stores, a lot of co-ops do. Uh, we, uh, throughout our evolution, we had fights about allowing meat in the store, had fights about allowing wine, even fights about allowing toilet paper into the store. So this was not the same culture as a downtown grocer. And uh, we had to sort of wrap our heads around that to, to uh, come downtown. One of the things that the city did in response to the outcry against the co-op being chosen was to put in uh, uh, an addendum to our lease, which is called the supermarket principles, in which we would have a full line of conventional products. So that caused us to have to develop relationship with vendors that we were totally unfamiliar with, cut in a whole line of products into the store, 25% that were, you know, the, the Kellogg's products and the Coca-Cola and all things that we'd never had before. It really uh, played havoc with some of the some of the members, the, the more purest faction of the members. We lost a lot of members at that point in time that didn't want to see this thing happen, this change happen. They thought it was selling out of the co-op uh, original principles of uh, providing healthy food to our members. So it was uh, it was a time of real growth for us. The city really did step up and back the co-op. Uh, kind of took a chance. Uh, in light of how contentious it, the issue was, um, many re many residents said their voices weren't being heard at City Hall, um, but still there was the political will, and uh, the city stepped up and helped develop a $2.6 million finance package for the co-op. The city paid, uh, got some grant funding to pay for a market study, which identified uh, many of the parameters that led to the formation of the store concept itself. Um, everything from the physical construction of the store to the product mix makeup and who the market would be that would be coming in. So all very, very important information. Uh, we uh, developed a lease that was ultimately signed in 2000. Some of the keys on this, I think, from the city perspective was, number one, once the decision is made that there is political will to follow through, That's, that was key. Uh, providing technical assistance every step of the way through developing finance package to site remediation to you know, all of the things that go with our energy efficiency, store design, all of that stuff. City was there to help at, at every step of the way. Uh, there was that willingness to take a chance on a local business and a business that did not necessarily fit the image in most residents' minds of what a downtown grocery store is supposed to be. Uh, so there was sticking your neck out a little bit, and then there was the brownfield uh, conversion process. So, yeah, the city really had to step up to make this happen, and um, and I think it, it, it worked. This store, from the get-go, exceeded all revenue expectations. It just blew them right out of the water. Uh, we thought we would do somewhere around $10 million or 8 to $10 million in the first year is like 12 or 14. And, uh, it just kept going and going and going. 
what one of the, what the city asked me to do is to report to them and and talk to them about food stamp redemption as the as a metric of us doing, you know, a, you know, being a responsible grocery store. They wanted to see significant food stamp redemption happening at the co-op, and they wanted to see increasing as our sales went up. And now we've really done that in the recession. It's taken off so much. Look like we've tripled food stamp redemption in the last uh, three or four years, but. Uh, one of the things that we realized as we started to hone our social mission is that uh, we wanted to really uh, attack what we thought was the most significant social issue of our city, which is childhood hunger. And they say one in five children live in food insecure families in Burlington. So we decided to add on, uh, start a program, Food for All, that adds an extra 10% discount onto um, folks who decide to join the co-op. And there's a, there's a waiver of uh, equity waiver um, if they, declare financial hardship and uh, this program has really taken off we have you know over a thousand new members to the co-op that weren't in a co-op before we brought them in from uh, all different parts of the city of that previously hadn't shopped here uh, the sales in this last two years were over one million six hundred thousand dollars in this program meaning that one hundred and sixty thousand dollars went into food relief for the most needy families so this has been a, you know, we were, you know, we're inspired by other co-ops that have done that. Bozeman had something like that. Hunger Mountain has a program like this. Other co-ops I know are thinking about it now. It's been tremendously successful, uh, mostly because we had a solid base before we added this on. The market provides significant revenue back to the city uh, through taxes and through the ground lease. And uh, I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of a million and a half dollars just over the last four years as return revenue to the, the city, which is great. Uh, the city market has created over 190 jobs, paying livable wage, and uh, most of them paying livable wage and, and, and having good benefits. Uh, the market supports Burlington Telecom, which is our local, locally uh, municipally owned fiber optic network, which is great, uh, as all businesses should be doing downtown. Uh, they provide the needed goods and services to the city residents. And one of the interesting things about city market is they act almost as a second stage incubator that allow both growers and value-added food producers to test their product. I mean, a conventional grocer shows would probably not have allowed people to come in and say, I've developed this product, can I sell it on your, on your shelves? <clears throat> and after some, you know, some testing and some uh, price point, you know, and, and where does it fit in the store uh, in terms of sections, City Market offers value-added producers or growers an opportunity to sell their product in the store. And I think in that way, it acts as that second step for incubating new new businesses in the city and uh, adds that extra value from an economic development standpoint. And it's a really valuable thing, and, and people get to test market their products. Uh, and the last thing is that, you know, from the city's perspective, it has that important social mission and has been really doing a great job on that and continues to innovate and continues to, to come up with new ideas of how to give back to the community, not just the members of the co-op, but the greater community. And uh, in that sense, it's, it's been a success in, in just about every way. So. Well, you know, when we first moved here, we, our 10th anniversary was just two weeks ago. And in the first couple of years, our sales to members was really small. You know, it was like less than 20% because we lost a lot of members and becoming the downtown store was tourists and students. And, you know, it was just, you know, it, it wasn't really a member driven organization. Mm -hmm. But in the last several years, we've gone from 20% sales to members in one year, the next year, 30%, the next year, 40%, the next year, 50%. And this year it's going to be higher to 55 percent sales so our membership sales are, are really uh, really really climbed uh, one of i have to do hats off to Kari bradley at hunger mountain he, he told us they dropped their annual equity installment from like theirs was 25 or 30 down to 15 and we did the same thing and it just took off like mm -hmm. a rocket it became much more affordable the other big thing that happened was that's when we started patronage refund about four years ago and uh, when people get their checks, they just like light up. And this past year in November, we sent back as the cash portion uh, $600,000 to uh, to our membership. And the average person got $98 back right before Thanksgiving. 
and this always spurs the people start talking about it. They get really excited by it, and you know the sales start to really uh, jump up in the co-op when that thing happens. So membership is really excited. You know the, the co-op is doing well. We're looking to expand again. We're looking at sites in the city, about a mile from us. So things are things are going well. I uh, just hope things keep going, and, and, and what it shows is that uh, a co-op can thrive even in a down economy. And I think that uh, you know, has gotten sales are consistent, and they're consistently going upwards. It seems, and uh, and that's a true measure of, of success. I think. And there's some challenges with the with the area that we want to expand into that our you know our market study told us to look at, and the city has stepped forward again to. Uh, help pave the way to make it successful. So again, we're, we're very, very grateful for all that Burlington has done to uh, help us you know, work out here. City Market is Burlington's downtown grocery store. It's a cooperative. Cooperatives mean that it is owned by the community. I saw a co-op and woo, I zeroed in. A member of a co-op means that you own the store. It's, it's equity. I guess you could say I'm one of the owners. Ooh, look at me. This co-op is owned by the members. Everybody is equal in their ownership. It's not that expensive. It's only $15. $15 you are an owner. And $15 is an investment. It's not...